Welcome to Keep Sell Loan with a twist. It's not really a twist, we just add an extra section. <laughs> but we've all seen these videos before. Look, we've done them on AFTV over the years. We're doing something different. We're adding an extra section because rather than just talking about the squad and who we think will be a part of it next season who won't, we're looking to see what part in particular they'll play next season. Are they going to be a squad player who will do their bit and... Yeah, sure, play quite a lot of football. Will they be a starter and really be dependent on to be big players for us next season? Or, as we always do, will they be loaned out to get some development, to get some time elsewhere, or sold and moved on for good? Are we happy with the new section we've added, Laurie Cecil? Yeah, just, just one point of clarification. Yes. I think I know where you're going with this, but just to make sure. So, uh, our, uh, my, myself and Cecil, we're giving our opinions, or do is it what we think the manager will do? Your opinions. My so what opinion, we'll do... Right. We'll get your opinions, and if you two can't decide on one, I'll be the tiebreaker. Okay. You guys right with that? Sounds good to me. Let's okay. go. <laughs> yes, yes, you're the deciding make our way through the whole squad. You're remember. the arbiter. There are returning players who had been out on loan, and we're going to be talking about them. It is the full group that Mikel Arteta has as he goes into this summer. So we start with quite, I was going to say, a difficult one, but I'm curious. Aaron Ramsdale. I'm going to go to you first, Cecil. Um, oh, I see, this is where we just spoke off camera, and I said... What I would like to keep Aaron Ramsdale, but it's not going to happen. Um, so realistically, and it's only right to, is to sell. He's going to obviously want to make a push for the World Cup squad in 2026. He's doesn't seem like he's going to get many minutes at all in this Arsenal side anymore. It seems like Arteta has made his decision with David Raya. Um, going to sign him obviously on a full and, and with Ramsdale as well he only really got charity minutes this season as much as I think he's a quality goalkeeper I still stand and stick to the fact that I don't think the gulf between the two is massive as much as many people think um, but for me and Ramsdale and for the betterment of himself and what I'm going to say for a lot of these players is to be sold okay Laurie so yeah you agree so right? unequivocally so I mean listen I, as Cecil went on that monologue. Um, <laughs> he was, uh, he is yeah. a very good player. Um, and, but he's got a career to think about. Yeah. And he needs to get his career restarted. I feel a bit sorry for him. He's hardly played this season and um, he needs minutes. And um, with the goalkeeping situation, it's not like the outfield situations where, you know, there's a likelihood that you're going to get some minutes and stuff like that. Goalkeepers much less chances for that so yeah definitely so but I'll add one thing to this Ramsdale discussion which is for me it's sell or squad I mean I will not entertain alone what does that no, do for anyone no. I don't I mean that's actually okay some people are making the point that if you send him out alone he's brilliant and his price increases through that then maybe you benefit from there but I also need money coming in for players now mm. I don't think we can keep OK, cancelling contracts is a way back, but we can't just keep loaning players or whatever, you know, selling players that we think, oh, could we have got a bit more for them? I think it's either Ramsdale, who signed a new long-term deal, and I know that he probably signed them thinking he was going to be number one, yeah. but it's either you're a part of the squad and you're going to be our number two, or, you know, we, we move on permanently. And I'm happy with either way. I'm genuinely I'm happy with either yeah, one no. because he's a top... I mean, he's good enough to be a number one, let alone a number two. But otherwise, I, I don't, I don't want to see a loan. I just don't see how we benefit from. No, that. it's 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 either sell or yeah, it's like yeah. you said, squad player. But I just think it does frustrate me a little bit. I'm seeing they're pushing for Carl Hines to re-sign a contract. So it's looking like they're trying to keep hold of him. And I understand that because if you're going to get rid of Ramsdale, but I still want quality in that number two. Not to say Carl Hines isn't that, but he doesn't fill me as much confidence as if Ramsdale was in between the sticks, if David Raya wasn't available. So that is something that Arsenal may need to address this summer window or they're going to put their full backing in Carl Hine, but we're going to see And, and let's not than... forget, you get pretty decent wedge, for want of a better word. Selling, uh... <laughs> it's weird that you said Yeah, that. I don't know why I said that. It just came into my head. <laughs> Money. Wedge. Cash. Money. Fees. <laughs> Wonga. <laughs> yeah, That's whatever. What like, you know what I mean? You'll get a decent amount for him. Yeah, you would. Yeah. Um, okay, David Raya. Does it go without saying that yeah. he's a starter, starter? Or are some of you thinking that we need another first team goalkeeper this summer? He's a starter, but I would say there have been times this, well, the last season where I was not wholly impressed with some of his play. But I mean, what is he, 28? I think, I think so. 27. Yeah. I think he's older than Ramsdale, isn't he? Yeah, yeah he's older than yeah. Ramsdale. Yeah. 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 There's room for improvement, but he is a good keeper. Okay. Um, Carl Hein. Yeah, well, I've, I kind of mentioned, but speaking about the Ramsdale situation, I it goes into a squad player, but am I massively happy with that? Probably not. Um, I would like to see 
another goalkeeper come in that would happily be a number two that has that fills me with confidence. We've ended up with the Runnersons and the and I'd, sorry, I feel rude saying it. We did sign Runnerson, but we have ended up with number twos that we're mm. not happy with. Matt Turner Matt's, wasn't really yeah. it. So yeah, okay, it's a difficult one. I, it's interesting about Matt Turner is we wasn't quite sure until he went to Forest and then we saw yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when he went there, he thought, nah. He's no, do you know what? Now. I saw him against Nuremberg in pre-season and I know it was his first game, but I felt like I saw enough. I was just trying to, I was just doing the Arsenal by trying to convince myself that maybe I might get this wrong because Arteta has proved me wrong so many times. But no, I saw that in the first game. Sorry, Matt Turner, because obviously I've been, <laughs> been on the international football. He was just so but, different as a goalkeeper. Yeah. Like, he wasn't good enough for the ball. Anyway, but, but, but yeah. so, Hein, okay, so... For so me, what are you saying maybe, maybe maybe it is a loan or sell situation then. I don't know, but then you have to get another number three in as well. It just depends if you're bringing in, and I know people watching. Apologies, we haven't got the definitive answer. But how are we going to know if Arsenal sign another goalkeeper? If they sign another goalkeeper, I'd literally say, yeah, you either loan him or you sell him. But it's not as clear as that because we're going to need a number two. And right now, and, and this is why is. the goalkeeping situation is quite unique because you could get a number two that stays at the club. Let's face it, he's not particularly good because of the fact that if you get a really good number two, they're not going to want to be a number two, if that makes sense. No, I get that. Yeah, yeah, if I get if that. you're a good keeper, you're not going to want to be, because you know that being a number two means you're very unlikely to get much game time. And, and I've either, So if you're worth your salt, you're not going to want to be a Arsenal number two. Arsenal putting trust though, it feels like from my standpoint, that they're putting trust in Carl Hein because Arthur Conquer went on loan, I think he had it's quite a good um, loan spell, but- Was he, he a Wrexham? Yes, yes, yes. But before that, he also had another. He had quite a few multiple loan spells, and um, yeah, they were good. They were good loan spells that he was on. So he's been away while Carhain is the the next in line, really, for that number one spot. Obviously, Ramsdale, but that's he's next in line um, for it, and that shows that Arsenal kind of looking for that, unless mm. they go into the market and get another goalkeeper. So what are we setting on with Hein? Squad, loan, sell. I'm from the knowledge I have right now. I have to say squad because I don't know if we're going to go in and get another goalkeeper. Yeah, I'd say squad. Cool. Yeah. I agree with that. Okay, then we go to Okonkwo, who was at Wrexham. I think got he was the goalkeeper of the year. Yeah, you go. I think he did well. He got. Um, he won a massive award as well. Yeah, I think that. I think that was it. I think that was it. Yeah. I, I'll let you guys go first. And then. After Okonkwo, I, I've got to say I've not seen too much of no. this guy play, if at all. So, based on that, I'd have to say so. I'm going to go with another loan. I um I watched him in the under twenty threes. Um, I mean, me and Ty, me and Ty went to one of the games. I watched him there. He is tall. He's he's a, he's, he's definitely a big figure in goal. Um, does the money there? I don't think from what I saw of him. Obviously, he obviously was on loan. I'm not going to lie and say I watched him on his loan spells. I didn't. But when I did see him in the under twenty threes, um, which I think was two seasons ago, he's not at the level obviously of Arsenal of, of playing out from the back that confident and all. And, and that's understandable. So for me to get so to if that, he's not that level, sell him then. No, I think he's he's still very, very young. I think he's given another loan spell. I, don't, I think he's enjoying the loan spells okay. until he gets his price. He's 22. In, I mean, that is very young for a goalkeeper. For a goalkeeper, yeah. Um, I think you, you keep raising that price tag and then eventually he gets a big, he gets a big move. Mm. Well, a, a move for a good price or he comes into his I don't know what his team. contract situation is, but to split it, I'm going to go with the loan as well. Mm. I know what you mean. I, mm. I was actually about to say sell, but then I thought 22... If you can tie him down to another deal, you never know what the goalkeeper situation is going to be. You don't, you never know if he's going to grow. I mean, I remember Joe Hart sort of went on loan to Birmingham and suddenly he just exploded. Yeah. As the mm. you know, goalkeepers sometimes take time. Emmy Martinez, we had for years before we actually realised he was a good goalkeeper. And I'm not saying you're again. I have to preface it that, by saying I've not seen him play. Yeah. The fact that he's not made an impact in terms of getting any game time would appear to suggest that he's either not ready yet or not quite good enough. So oh. I'm basing my decision or opinion on that. On Conquo alone. Okay, well, we're done with the goalkeepers then. Um, we've got a starter, we've got a squad player, we've got a loan, and we've got a sale. Let's That's go into good. defence. William Saliba. Starter. There's not really many many. Absolute to starter. Yeah. Ben White. Same. Absolute starter. Starter. Oh. No, starter. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking because be a... I, I know what's I know what's there's coming. There's a player coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I have to make a, a decision of which one drops out. <laughs> so, yeah, Ben White. Oh. Um, yes, Ben White is a starter. And when I say starter, I, I just mean is going to play a significant Yeah, that's how I interpret it. And is going to be a real... Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Ben White is a starter. Gabriel, we agree, is yes, a starter. starter. Here we go. And then Although we it's interesting because first couple of games of last season, for some reason, uh, the manager didn't fancy him true. in that centre-back position. 
Yeah. Which is still a mystery to me. I don't know how that came about. But anyway, the, the, the wrong stuff. was righted. What about um, Durian Timber? Starter. Yeah, absolute starter. But that's yeah. crazy to say, isn't it? When we haven't really. We've seen him. But it's crazy to say when you've come from a whole season of injury to then just bypass a few of the other players who are going to who are going to come up. So I'm not going to go skip forward now, but it it's mad to think that. But it's it feels like the only right answer. But also, if he if we sign a left back, which apparently we want to do, and it is more in the mould of a I don't know left footer who fits whatever Arteta wants from that position then Timber, for me, starts to feel, and this is not meant as a... It, it, I'm not trying to be critical when I say this because I think he's such a talented footballer, but for me, it then starts to feel more squad. You know, can he slot in at centre-back for Saliba? Can he play at right-back for mm. White every now mm. and again? Can he play on there? And you suddenly got a player who you start to use in different ways, but ultimately... I, I see put, him as that. I see yeah, him as that. Cause, but um, I probably agree with Starter just because I think he'll play so much football and, anyway. And, and he has to. He has to... Sounds mad. He has to kind of not play catch up, but he has to get into you know this se- into the season and understand what what it is you know to be at Arsenal and all of that. And, and like you said, he's, he's actually his natural position as a centre back. Let's not get it twisted. Mm-hmm. That's his position mm-hmm. when he was at Ajax. But we're going to deploy him as as likely a left back from what we saw or a full back from what we saw in pre season and how strong and how good he was. But in you that know position. why that is because he's such a talented footballer. I mean, he genuinely excites me for next season. But that's why you need to play as many games as yeah. possible yeah. as well because you have to get used to whether you're playing left back, centre back, you have to get used to that in case players go down because I can yeah. rely on Timber to play that centre back role alongside a Gabriel Williams Saliba if he's been integrated properly. So that makes sense. And also the thing that's popping in my mind is that City play with four centre backs. Is that where is that where Arsenal going? I hope not, but it seems like most of us centre backs are been doing a bit of that. I I, yeah. I I think Timber will. I think Timber will be starting games. Arteta will find a way to get him into that mm, team, 100%. but I don't think it'll be at the cost of Ben White, Saliba, or Gabriel. Oh, it's the cost of some other players, though. Yeah. Well, one of them, Jakub Kivio. What are we saying here? I'll go to you. I'd, I'd sell. Huh? I'd sell. Yeah, I would sell. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. I would say, uh, I've not been cent. overly impressed with Kivior, if I'm being honest. Um, I think he's decent, but I think... Put it this way, I wouldn't like be flogging him, yeah? But if he attracts interest and they get uh, a certain amount of money... Him, would you do it? Given that, you know, there's FFP and you know, we need to fund um, the money for players in positions further up the pitch which we do need I think we could afford to let him go yeah I, obviously I, I disagree with that I just think only because because give your give your one I don't think you get 25 million anyway he hasn't played enough in the Arsenal shirt as well to kind of up his value for for more than that or around that I just think he is we need defenders we need players I think the players that you're looking at to sell to bring money in for FFP are further up the field I feel like we've made Champions League we've made a big bit mull of money from that plus the sale players sales I'm going to talk about later will bring you enough money to replenish areas that we need to rather than the defenders. Because I, I do worry about a Saliba or Gabriel going down. I think the drop between them two and Kivio going in is obvious. But Kivio, I think there's a player that can, who's quick. He, he can be relied on, I'll be honest. He, he was he was. You don't say that with much conviction. Because th- there's not much <laughs> else we have. I think you, you get... And that's of, why I would sell him. Nah. So no. because of the, no. my squad player your squad it makes okay. sense just to clarify I, I'm not having a pop at Kivio no, of course yeah. he's a decent yeah, player yeah you're not saying get rid yeah I'm you're not saying, saying I'll get rid of him he's wrong but what I'm it. saying is if out the blue because let's face it it's unlikely if out the blue um, a club with a decent amount of money come in and say look we're interested I would certainly consider it 100%. But he's also, he's also versatile. He's also a set. We mentioned it's not the pet. I don't want to say it's a pet model, but again, he's a centre back that can. Well, there was question times when he came against Fulham. He didn't play great left back, but he can do it. And same, he's a centre back. I think you need a lot of versatility in that back line, and that is what we have. Timba, Kivior, I mean, mm. a Tomiyasu, same thing. A Ben White. He's not at the level of any of those players you just mentioned, and I think that's quite obvious. I think he can get there. I would say that. So okay, so I've got the final decision, and I'm going to stick with squad. I actually hear where you're coming from. Mm. I think if if 30, 35 million dropped on our door, I think AC Milan have been linked and you know, reportedly are in for him. Mm. That would be very difficult to walk away from because I yeah. feel like you could probably it would replace Kivio for that amount. Okay. But, that mad. but I do think that Kivio... Yeah, but I mean, we signed him for 22, I think, 20 slash 22. Mm. Um, if, yeah, if, if 
25 plus near 30 came in, I think you could probably replace him. But I don't know. I thought he did well in the run. I thought from January to March he was good for us. Um, and actually, we haven't even seen him in his best position. He's a centre back. Yeah, exactly. And he's been doing a job at left back. And as a backup centre back to Gabriel, I've seen enough to feel that he can do a job for what is Touchwood, a pretty robust player who doesn't often need to come out the 11. But give your can if, if he needs to, if Gabriel ever needs to not play. So, yeah, squad for me. I'd give him one more year. Mm. Um, but yeah, what about Tommy Asu? This is why I paused um, when we spoke about Ben White. Um, not to listen, Ben White is is a starting right back. I mean, he's contender for Player of the Year for Arsenal. But I, I think Tommy Asu, it's a, injuries have riddled him. It, they really have because I think he would he'd have been. He still is going to be a great player for Arsenal, and he's going to he's going to have great performances. But I think he would have hit heights that we none of us would have uh, foreseen if he didn't have as many injuries. So he's going to have to go in squad player. It's sad because. I think he's good enough to start, but for me, squad player, and I think that's only right. Um, there's no point loaning him. Doesn't make. Sense. I mean, you'll get a lot of money if you sell him. I think if you can put him in the market, you can get a good price for him. But there's no. I point think you're being him. too down about it. I'd love to know your thoughts are. You know what? Um, you might be surprised, but well, go on. I wavered about selling, but I will go for squad. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the reason being, I'm, again, I'm not lawyer. The diamonds no, no, in that I, chain no, are, are sinking <laughs> into your head or sighting into your bloodstream, brother. I swear. No, no, hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> the injuries, bro. It's been a real problem. Yeah, yeah. That, that, okay. Fair. So argument. I'm thinking, if you get a player that's proving to be injury prone and out of the blue, you get like a 30 million toss that you you've got to look at that and think, yeah, you know what? It might be best for both of us. But listen, on balance, he's a very good player. I like his attitude. He brings a lot to the team. And for that reason, and that reason alone, I'll go squad. James, talk to me. What did you say? You said I was, I was too well, down I, on I, it. What, I, think, was... I think he's... and he, OK, this isn't probably the ambition of Takira Tomiyasu, but I think he's the perfect squad player. He can play right back, oh, left so back, you agree with me, back. Yeah, squad. He, you know, no, I think he knows he's had injury problems and hasn't yeah. really earned his place or, or, or earned that place in Arsenal fans' minds to sort of think, oh, next season we can rely on Tommy Asu to be available all the time. When he is fit and firing at his best, I think he is one of the best one-on-one -on -one defenders we have. I think he's brilliant in the air. He's still young. He's like 24 mm. and he's like 6'2 and like really kind of commanding presence. He's decent enough on the ball, good with both feet, but he's not proven his fitness. So for me, he's just the perfect squad player. That's, just that's absolutely no, I agree. Yeah, uh, and like use I said, him when you can and if you can't, I was wavering about okay. selling because of the injuries and there's a few other players I've, we will talk about that later. But It's like Kivio, if, if, if some like semi crazy money came in, like yeah. I said, 30 million for Kivio, if, if 35 million came for Tommy Asu, you think, you know, maybe we could actually find someone else who is more available but I don't think we'll find many players with this skill set you know that good in the one-on-one -on -one duels that good in the air who could play across the whole back four very comfortably I think he's pretty unique but he can't stay fit so for me he's just a squad yeah, player without injuries he'd be up he'd be he, he was there was a time where he was fighting for the start he was the starting position I think he was every fan I spoke to was like start Tommy November Asu. last season yeah. he was he Ben White came out the team temporarily so yeah. Tommy has to get some minutes of right back there you so, go so there yeah you go. and he could play both full backs and some will question he's He's number two in in, in Arsenal squad for for left back position. So yeah. Well, how about this one, <laughs> Alexander Zinchenko? So, absolutely. So, I think we've seen the best at Zinchenko at Arsenal. Um, I mean, if you remember, at the time we got him, he he came in with Jesus, and people were throwing around the term mentality monsters, and we got these guys from City, and they're going to take us to the next level. And listen, he is a good player. And they did take um, us up. Several yeah, levels, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, and he has um, improved us, but I do think he's reached his ceiling now at Arsenal, and I think um, we should be looking to sell. And if we get decent money, 20 million upwards, I think it would be remiss of us not to sell him and bring in somebody younger, a bit more sprightly and less injury prone. So, yeah. Sorry to, to sound harsh, but I've, no, I've, I've given I've, this he, some I, thought, he's, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm undecided. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, I see, what you're doing now is... But we're not loaning, right? We're not loaning Zinchenko. No, we're not loaning him No, we're not loaning The question is, is he going to have a part to play in the team next season a or squad do we sell, sell him? And the thing with all, with all of these people, for everyone watching, of course we understand that if Bayern Munich, who have been linked with Zinchenko, offer 55 million, of we're all going to go, go OK, thank you for everything, but we're going to do that. Now, what your number is that makes you go, oh, I can't say no to that. But we're just talking, let's be realistic, yeah. that if we're offered money, it's one we might do. But otherwise, the choice is really with us. Do we want? It's not about the money. Do we want to keep him? 
or is it time to sell because we can get some decent money? That's I mean, listen, if, if the money out. that we're offered is considered derisory, you know, sub twenty oh, million. Yeah, likewise. Like if, you're, if you're offered ten million, then obviously you're not going to sell it. But what I'm saying, if you get what you consider is a decent amount from thirty or above. I think you, you consider it. I, I Even I was, 25. I said I was undecided. I think 25 is a bit disrespectful for Zinchenko. I think people, mm. I like Zinchenko. Not, 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 not that I just like him. I think he's actually a good player. I think he's on the ball, what he offers, what he brought to Arsenal. I think I've said it many times on this channel. He was transformative when they came with Jesus. The way we played kind of went through him. I really enjoyed it. I even There was even times this season I was like, oh, if we're playing at home, you must play Zinchenko because that's the way we're going to play. We're going to be on the ball. You must play him. He's so good on the ball. Funny enough, most of the home games I was quite disappointed with how Arsenal played um, this season. But Zinchenko, for me, I struggle to, to give the answer because I actually... Like I said, I think he's a technically good player. I know people go to his defending and people say he's let us down a lot in this season, but I think he got harshly, overly harshly criticised. I think I was right to criticise him at times. I think some fans went too far with it. However, I agree. I think the the answer is you have to sell him, but I was well, no, because I was. It's not. I don't think it's the easiest decision. I don't. I, I, no, I don't wait, and it's not something I'm. I'm. So, I'm so like what I'm going to say is, right, you have to let your head rule your heart. That's. One of the things I came into this thing, we have to be honest in our appraisal of the players and make a decision based on that. Now, as I said before, talented player, like I said, the inverted role does that very well. However, injuries, lack of form, to me, he's hit his ceiling, bro. Yeah, if you get decent money for him, I think it suits both yeah, parties again. Yeah, decent money, but it's not, it's not as simple as... I'm not doing it because I like the player. I like the whole squad, so this would be a stupid video if I was on this anyway because I could say keep everyone. I'm just... I understand of how good of a player... I actually think he's a Do good player. Do you think player. he's hit his ceiling at Arsenal? Yes or no? Because that's how I base my... I think he's hit his ceiling. And, and, he, and it's plateaued and it's kind of on the way down yeah, a little let bit. So, you, so do you agree on sell? I think sell. So. Okay, so he's going down a sell. For what it's worth, I'd have had him in squad, but I, I hear the sell thing. My thing with Zinchenko is, I think last season, we never really nailed down our midfield. The mm. season he was at his best was his first season when Martinelli was firing. I think Martinelli's also suffered because of the yeah. midfield thing. And all season it's been, well, is it Rice? Is it Vieira? Is it Smith Rowe? Who's going to be that left eight? Jorginho played there at one point. We've not really know what to do with a part of the pitch that for seven years, I think, was held down by Granit Xhaka. Mm -hmm. I think if we address the midfield properly this season, we get so, someone that we know, ah, he is playing in that role week in, week out. We know that's his position unless you know we do the odd rotation or there's an injury or whatever. I think you can start to get the best out of Zinchenko again. If you get Zinchenko inverting the way he was in that first season mainly, we moved away from it a bit this year, and you have him getting into midfield... I think he's a bit of a, what's the word? He's a bit of a cheat code, actually. Yeah. He's almost like, you know, you're playing with a back four and, and a midfield three, but actually you look at the, t the team when he's there in midfield and suddenly you've got five midfielders with a false nine, as in Chenka moving in. And at our best, or, or some of the best that we played was when we had him doing that. Now, can we get back to that? I don't know. Maybe we've moved away. What Maybe do you think to the suggestion that I made that he's hit his ceiling at Arsenal? I think he has, but at the same time... He needs I, squad. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I almost don't think that's a bad thing. I mean, if his ceiling is what we saw against Newcastle at home in his first season, against May United at home in his first season, that early spell, then I'm more than happy for that to be his ceiling because I thought he was brilliant in those games. But... Can we get him back to that? For me, it's all about the midfield signing. So for I, me, I give him one more season, three full seasons, and then and then we'll know. I do want to add just quickly. I think going to next season, Arsenal move forward in that whole invert. I think I think it changes. I think with Timber coming in, and and, and I think it'll be Timber and Ben White. I think I don't know what it is. I have a feeling that Arteta goes with something different. Did that, you see that, the double invert against yes, Everton? Yes, yes, yeah. and I think it's surpassed and Timber. So I personally think it's going to surpass what Zinchenko can offer us. I think it's going to go a little bit further. I think Timber will be the answer and Zinchenko, as much as you want him for squad, I think the second option, I'd rather have a Tomiyasu, someone who's just solid defender. I think you want Timber and Ben White to do the double inverted or something different that Arteta is going to do and then the full back to be solid defenders, which I don't think okay. Zinchenko is strong at. So, yeah. All right, well, we're, um, we're halfway through the positions. Let's move into, actually, no, I lie. We've got a few defenders. Let's be quite quick with these. Go. Kieran Tierney. So, so, so I like him, but um, again, injury prone. He's been out on loan. Um, doesn't appear to fit with the manager's plans. Um, um, 
yeah so yeah injury cool. injury carried on through Real Sociedad but I think he, yeah, he didn't, he did, play, he didn't play massive amounts for them either so yeah I cool. mean yeah. sell sell it's a shame I, I, no, I, I, love, do like, I love him I do so like much that so if Arsenal spent all their money on a midfielder and a striker and decided that Tierney was just going to be the backup left back I would I would be praying he stays fit because mm. I think there's a quality player there I weirdly think this season this season gone he was more suited to the way we played than the season before when he was trying to do what Zinchenko did but we'll see we'll see how pre-season goes for him uh, Tavares so yeah cool so Tierney and Tavares in the sell list okay cool uh, let's move into midfield let's just start with actually Aloni Albert Sambi Lakonga who Looked did well at Luton. I actually don't think his spell at Palace was even that bad. Um, but he did well at Luton. He and did. He, he I think did for the first few months, wasn't really in the team. But then he grew yeah. into it. Put some good performances against the likes of Liverpool, Man United at home. Held his own against good sides. Right. In a Luton side that everyone thought were just going to fall straight out of the Premier League. But at least had a real go at it. And I think took it to the... Mm. He was one of their day. better players, apparently. Yeah, towards, he did, he did, he end, did have some good. injury concerns in the midfield well. too. Yeah. You know, double pivot with, yeah. with Barkley. He was typically the the one you know, receiving off the off the back four, or back three. Um, but unfortunately for Lukonga, I don't think he's going to be in the plans going forward. So I think he makes, based on his performances at Luton, I do think he will attract some interest. So I think it's probably best for both parties if they part ways. I've got to say. He's actually told us already that yeah. the club have said he's going, he's going that yeah. he's going to go. So, which is a shame because like, again, a, a good player. But I, I think he was a good player in there. Uh, like you said, the back end of his his loan spell was really good. Um, I like he's so composed on the ball. I do like Lukonga. Um <laughs> I was very frustrated at him when he was at Arsenal, but I don't think he was playing a position that was suited for him. I think he got thrown in the deep end a lot and and couldn't swim at times because he was uncomfortable where he was playing. I think the experience he got at Luton would do him really well. Um, but it's a shame, but yeah, he's he's gonna go like you mentioned. But I think there's, there's a, a player, player there. there. Yeah, there's, there's, a player. A few, there's a is few. Is he good Arsenal good or is he good just Premier League generally good? Well, but I'm with you. I yeah. think he's a good player, so hopefully he gets a good move. Yeah, we get a good feel. There's a few of those. I actually wish him all the best because yeah, I, yeah, I, I think he's like a good well. lad as well. Yeah, there's so, a few yeah. of those players that fit into that bracket, in, but we're just gonna get to. All right, well this gets fun. Thomas Partey. Oh, right. I'll because you one. could argue for starter, squad or sell here. You could honestly argue for any of those three. All right. I'm going to go first on this one because I have changed my mind on this one because initially, and mm. we spoke about this on one of the watch-alongs when we was going through the team, I was saying that I'd like to see him stay at Arsenal next season because when he's right, he's a very talented player and... Um, you know, he, his, his abilities and what he brings to the team is unquestioned. However, the injury record is such that you can't, you just can't ignore it anymore. Uh, I think the season before we played 33 games, um, which is decent. And I think he got something like three goals and he did play well consistently. However, last season that dropped to 14. Nine starts, five subs, two appearances or coming off the bench. That's not sustainable at this level, certainly not for a team like Arsenal now that we want to be trying to really win things. So, sell is my um, decision on that one. I say that with a heavy heart because I really like Partey. I remember when he came to the club back in 20, there was all the excitement around it, Robbie doing the <laughs> videos to Cecil and all them, man. I wasn't there. Was, yeah, yeah. like, hey. But listen, man, um, I've got to be true to what I've been saying previously. And um, yeah, if you're not going to cut it, you've got to be sold. Yeah, I mean, I've done about a million videos on Thomas Pye um, and, and the injury record and whatnot. I mean, he's, he misses 50% of every season. Um, if, if you break it down, his numbers, I think it's like 76 games he's missed in four seasons. But um, yeah, it's sad. And I get the Ghanaian community get a bit irate towards me when I talk about it. But I think it is, it's time to sell. Yeah. You, we need to, the thing is, the reason, we need to rely on players. We have to. We look at Saliba and Gabriel and we came, I know we didn't win the league. We came so close, but the season before we saw Saliba go down, I feel like that's where it capitulated. We have to rely on our top players. If we can't rely on them and next season that we're going into, I think we're going for major honours as well as maybe the league. You can't rely on a Thomas Partey as good as he can be. You can't rely on him. And also, when he returned from injury, I think people overhyped as well. He was good. 
very good and we saw I think I one game we saw one level amazing. but people yeah I think people when he come back from injury this season people going on like he was he was a saving game oh look how good this guy we <laughs> missed him he weren't that great I'll that's be what real. they're saying it's sometimes you can be better when you're out the team you come back in and think oh yeah this is what we've missed stop, but then when you're really deep when you're not playing <laughs> yeah. and the other team's doing badly I, I, and then when you're really yeah. deep it, you think actually he, watch back he, some of those before. Yeah. he wasn't I mean he's good but he wasn't what people people were going on like he, he, he stole the show and, and you hit the nail on the head so next season is going to be pivotal it's going to be a real it's pressure rise. there's second place next year will not be good enough exactly so we can't afford to carry anybody mm. and unfortunately for Partey you know I mean you look at his injury record over the last couple of seasons and it's not been great and you just simply can't take that risk he occupies a position in the team which is at the core of that team and if you can't be relied upon I'm sorry so, final verdict is so 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 goes into sell. But what would, what would yours be? You didn't say much on it. Would you? Would, are you agreeing? Or you? Because people will say he's a good player, and he is a good player. I wanna, but he just can't um, be relied upon. I was listening to um, George on the Canon podcast, who made such a great point, which is if we sell Partey, but we also have Rice, who we we claim isn't as good on the ball. He's good on the ball. Mm. He is very good on the ball. But he's not. He's not like Partey, Jorginho level on the ball. And you lose Partey you suddenly need to add potentially another ball-playing midfielder and you need to add some presence because now Rice is your only presence in midfield. So I would personally, I don't think that this £40 million offer from, I don't know, yeah, clubs around the world is going to come in for Thomas Partey, not even maybe 30. Yeah. I would keep him as a squad player and just, yeah, he's just he's, if he's fit and available, we can use him. If not, then it doesn't matter because you've got Rice, you've got someone else. But I just think if you lose Partey, Rice and Partey, you're only six foot plus midfielders in there. You lose them and suddenly we already needed someone who was more complimentary as an eight and a creative player like a Bruno Guimaraes. And now if you lose Rice, well, we're building midfielders, midfields with Jorginho, Erdegaard and Smith Rowe. Do you, you get what I mean? Mm. I, I don't know. I, yeah. uh, I, I think I, the, the other you get thing what I'm I, trying the, to say? Yeah, like I you, do, yeah. you, you suddenly lose a... I don't know. I'm, but I'm, going with the, I'm going with the mindset that Arsenal are going to replace the Thomas Partey with like a Yusuf Fafana or an Anana. An, an, so if you like get Fafana, so if you lose Partey, you get Fafana and then you still get a, another midfielder. Yeah. But is, are you happy if we only, if we lost Partey and signed Fafana and did nothing else, would you be happy with that this year? N- and nothing else? I mean, in midfield, and, uh, in midfield. Oh, midfield. Oh, yeah. well, wouldn't it feel a bit like it's, we're it's, still we're, lacking? We're, yeah, we still feels like we're just, uh, we, we're going, you've we also, made too you've many also, steps um, forward, but I'll, be happy, I'll still be happy with that. I like Yusuf Fafana. I think you've also got to look at it as well. Part is what he's currently 30. He mm-hmm. turned 31 in a few weeks' time in June. Mm-hmm. And I just think that added to the uh, injury record. And of course, you guys said something that is true is that his performances have been good, but they've not been out of this world. I think you're looking at a guy, again, another one that's hit the ceiling. It's an albeit brief ceiling. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's probably plateauing out. Yeah, on the yeah. slide Has it a, makes sense to sell alright I think we've got some more obvious ones coming so Martin Erdegaard is going to be a starter of yeah, course we'll, there's, some, there's some players that come under the no-brainer category yeah. and uh, he's Martin one Erdegaard loan to be fair <laughs> <laughs> just to see what he's see what he's about yeah, see, <laughs> get, see. some physicality in the championship <laughs> yeah. can he do it down yeah. at, yeah. at Bolton <laughs> um, uh, yeah alright let's go to this guy next Smith Rowe Oh, James, you're picking the difficult one. Well, we've got to get through Sell, sell bro. It's not that difficult. No, he's failed. Sell squad all over. Why, why is it difficult? He, he's not, he's hardly played. And, and if we're applying the same criteria to the other guys, when he has played, has he rocked, you know what I mean? Has he rocked it? No. He's a good player, don't get me wrong. Mm. A good young player. I think he's best served moving on with his career elsewhere. We all get more game time. Where you'll become a better player because you'll be playing more. Yeah. I just think that Arsenal at the moment is is kind of past him. What's yours? I'm stuck because I'm stuck between Fabio Vera and Mil Smith Rowe. That's why I'm so I'm so oh. stuck on this one because you, I think you do you keep both or do you sell one and keep one or do you get rid of them both? That's why I'm so confused because I know Fabio Vera. Listen, the right side in the mid and can also play on the right, but Mil Smith Rowe. I, I know he's more the left side, but I just feel. There is a space for him in this team. I just, it's just an injury. I don't know if, uh, do you know what? I'll just sound on it. Let's go, I'm gonna go squad. 
from Mel Smith Rowe. Mm. Sounds like a heavy dose of sentiment in there. I don't know. I don't know. I've never met him. I don't know. I know, like but that. I, I, I know you I just, like him as a player. I, no, no, because a lot of the fan base and people might think I'm a P trying to appease them. They love Mel Smith Rowe and always say, "Listen, I would love to keep him aside." Do you know what? But I just it's all it's all con. This is what annoys me though. Like it's all context. If we we're going to get some of these players, but if we sell uh, Ramsdale for thirty million and Ketty for twenty five million. Um, I don't know who, I mean, maybe one or two others. Eddie and, what, and we've yeah. actually made a good amount of Reece. money. And then West Ham come in with a loan bid for Smith Rowe. I'm actually thinking, all right, let's send him on loan, get him playing a full season of Premier League football yeah. and see if he's, because I like the player a lot, but that's with content. Now, the current context is we haven't sold anyone. So I be- reluctantly say sell because no, for me, and the other reason why I say he's sell a is because asset we know Arteta's not trusted. Exactly, he's an asset. He's a young player, a talented player. There will be clubs out there who think, yeah, man, he can do a job for us. He will yeah, he will attract interest. So for that reason alone. Okay. And like I said, it works best for him as well. He needs to be playing. Um so what, are we saying loan or sell? S- sell. Sell, unfortunately. Sell. Okay. Um but I'm not massively against a loan if certain things happen with cool. the rest of the squad and sales. Uh Georgini, I think we agree, is just again a bit yeah, like a squad so, player. Just like the most perfect squad player, isn't he? Just comes in, does a job and always does it well. He offers a lot as well when it comes to experience, how to, how to I think being around certain players and how he dictates how yeah. I, I'm highlighting this because I think Partey offers that presence. That's I didn't really consider that. But I don't see much apart from his quality um, what he does in his position. Away from that, I think Jorginho, the writers, they offer a bit more as well. And I, I actually see and, Jorginho as a player coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he'll, he'll, yeah, he'll yeah. go to that. Yeah. And, and and he earned, he earned his rights. So yeah. I can see him sitting yeah, next to Arteta on that, um, on that bench. Cool, so squad, this. perfect. Fabio Vieira. So, he's not made an impression. He's a good player. There have been player. times in this season I've almost forgotten that he's there. And again, he's another guy with talent. We've seen albeit limited and brief, but we know that he's got talent. He's young. He will attract interest. I would imagine it's specifically from abroad, maybe the likes of Portugal, Spain, Italy. Come on, man. You know what I mean? He's, he's yeah, almost yeah, becoming dead. Um, yeah, I'll keep it, I'll keep it brief. I, um, again, it comes to context. If, if we sold our load of players that we've spoken about, a loan spell would be great for Fabio Vera, I think. I actually think it really would, uh, especially in the, in the Premier League. But why, why would you prefer a loan over selling? No, I'm, I'm going to say money. sell. I'm saying if we oh, sold okay. out, yeah. sold the rest of the players we spoke about. So sell, sell. So, yeah. Sell. I know, you, I know you like Fabio Vieira. And I, get I like him. No, I think he's a quality player. There's a quality in there, but... Like I said, there's been times this season where I've almost forgotten that he's been part of the squad. It, for what it's worth, he's squad for me. I, I give him one more season. Jesus, we're going to get to Jesus. Jesus Sinchenko Vieira, who we signed summer of 2022, yeah. and Arsenal made real leaps forward. And at one point, we felt very encouraged by all three of them. I would give them one more year because I think they all showed promise in their first season, some at different levels. Second season, they'll all be disappointed with what they gave to this current campaign. But I'd give them one more. I think there's just other players we've had on for way longer that I'd be looking to move on first. But like we say, money talks and yeah. Um, Declan Rice. No brainer. (laughs) Sell him, yeah. Um, (laughs) Hopefully we get some of our 105 million back. (laughs) Um, but hang on, what if you got like a really crazy offer though, just out of the blue, nope. two hundred mil or something? Like no, nope. no, I Are think you? he's the best ball-winning <laughs> nope. midfielder in the world. Nope. No, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah nope. I hear it. Um, okay, this gets interesting, not in a negative way, but Kai Havertz, because I think we're looking at the starter and squad area here. Mm. Um, let's all look. I I went from really wondering why we signed this guy to saying he was one of the players that really showed up in the running big time. So full credit to him there. There's questions over his long-term position. There's questions over whether what he did as a nine, which was really impressive, or was impressive and he did well and he got better and better, mm-hmm. is actually sustainable over a whole year. Is he that out number nine that fires you to the title? I think he does so much tactically for the team and he works incredibly hard. He's versatile. But something just tells me that there's a reason we're all still calling for a Struggle. big money signing yeah. up front. Yeah. So where does that put him in terms of what we want to see from him next season? Because I'm almost judging this on the basis that we do get that striker. We're linked to Benjamin and Sesko heavily. Osman reports now. I also clearly want an eye. We're going off that 
if we're going off what you've, what you've just met, how you spoke and delivered that, then for me, a squad, and it's going to sound mad. Yeah, but but I'm, I, I'm not trying to manipulate you. No, just, but yeah, 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 don't, don't palm me. it off on to... Do, do you see no, why you you know, I'm seeing it that way? No, but you're saying, oh, based on what you see, we want to know what you would do. I would want him to be a squad player because I want a striker, a number nine to come in and I want to have the same love that Arta has showed Havertz, the same love for the striker that he brings in and I think this team gets elevated if he does that. So for You know me, what? Um, I'm going to say I agree with both of you. I, I, I think that yes, he has done well. He deserves to stay. Yep. However, for me, he's not the answer to uh, the striker issue. He's done well. He scored, was it 13 goals? Yeah, yeah Premier League goals. GA, something um, like that. Premier League. Seven assists, and the, the back end of his season was definitely better than the first season. So you could say there's been progression there. I'll give him that. However, would he be my long-term solution? And listen, if we're going to win the, the likes of the Premier League and Champions League, we need somebody in that number nine position that's going to fire you uh, to those trophies. And um, is Havertz that guy? I've got to be honest and say no, he's not. For me, I would like to see someone like a Isaac. Or something like that. And if you're going to fund those, which is why I'm, you know, I've been so vociferous in saying certain people sell them, because under FFP you've got to raise money to buy the kind of players that you want to bring in. So anything that I consider is not quite up to the mark. I say sell. Can I with him? He's a squad player. So can I say that this actually is weirdly comparable with Timber? And I ended up saying Timber starter because I felt that Arteta would find a way for him to play next season that he'd be important, he'd be too good to leave out the team in some way. I think Havertz may just find himself in the team somehow because Arteta will, if we get the striker who's on fire, he'll get Havertz more in midfield or he'll play him in different... I don't know. There's even talk... Arsenal are speculating whether he goes to what he tried to do at the beginning of the season, which was Havertz in a diamond, you know, behind a striker. Mm. So could he do something like that so you still have your midfield three? I'm, I, I lean towards squad. It's not a negative thing. It, it's yeah, a, it's not. He will still play a it's lot not. of football. He will still be involved a lot, mm. as will Tommy Asu, as will Jorginho. And he'll probably start more games than those two and be more a starter than... But for me, there's a reason I want a 80 to 100 million pound mm. striker. Mm. And Everyone. it's because, ultimately, it, I think they'll give more than yeah, Havertz yeah, uh, within yeah, that yeah. era. If I we think... sign Isak... I think we all agree Havertz probably doesn't start in our best team. Please, you know? Arsenal, do that. It'd be but, amazing. But no, people get so happen. upset when we're remotely critical yeah. about Havertz. If, 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 if on the other hand... We're going to have a big part we're gonna get, we'll, get, we'll get heat for that. If, well, if on the other hand we sign Sesco, then you could see Sesco will be, in effect, understudy to Havertz. Well, no. I don't see Sesco coming. I in agree with that. If we yeah. sign Sesco, then this changes the yeah. Havertz for me as the yeah. start but that's of the season. But that's why I said if, ha- if Havertz, get, no, if Sesco is the same love that Arteta gave to Havertz, I think younger can, though. I know, I know, it's a lot younger. No, but he's not going to cost sixty-five million, which is what Havertz costs. All right, let's go on to so, the rest. I mean, Bakaya Saka, we all agree is going to be no an absolute brainer. starter. We we agree with that. Um, Gabby Jesus, I think all of these now get Squad. really interesting. Gabby Jesus, so. Cell squad. Mm. So, if I could just say on that as well, I remember earlier on in the season you were there, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. When we did a show, and I was suggesting that back, back, way back months ago, and people laughed at me, ridiculed me. Ah, what are you talking you about? You're right. And I said, listen, man, this guy's injury record is not the best. Far from it, in fact. Terrible, and terrible. If you look at his goals output, it's not good. And then the man said himself. Listen, man, goals is not my forte or words similar. Some of it's lost in translation. But basically what he was saying is, yeah. I'm more than just a striker, you know what I mean, I, that gets goals. Goals is not the main part of my game. That may well be true, and he is a very good player. However, like I said, if you're going for major trophies, you can't afford anybody that's not up to the mark. And I'm sorry, with the injuries and the loss of form and the in and out stuff, he's not quite hit it. So... I think we've got the best of him. He's hit his ceiling at Arsenal. It's time to uh, part ways. Yeah, Jesus is from that knee injury. Hasn't been the same, Jesus. I just think like you leave yourself a bit thin when you because we're going to basically get rid of, in my opinion, all the strikers bar Jesus. Um, I think you leave yourself a little thin. I'm not saying Jesus plays many games next season at all. No, but, but you said you keep Havertz, so you were not getting rid of all the strikers. I just right? I, that's what I just said though. Pop, no, you bar, said Jesus. Yeah, I said. You run, when you watch your back, you'll see. But, um, okay, all right. but, but yeah, so I just think you're leaving yourself a little bit thin if you if you're only leaving really Havertz, and it feels like you're going you're going back. If you bring in another striker, you're just going back to what you've we've had before. I just think Jesus, 
in the squad, as much as I hate his injury record as well, I just feel if he understands that we can't rely on you as much because of your injury record, you're only going to be used ever so often. I think it offers something that's different to what we're bringing in as well. I think Havertz is different. I think Sesco profile is what people in the Premier League are going for now. But again, I think Jesus offers something completely different to that. And it can be versatile and play not just up front, but on the, on the wing as well. So I think you keep him as a squad player, but boy, his, his contract's up on 2027. So pff, yeah, you, I, give, um, you give him, you give him. So what are you saying then? Keep him in the squad. Uh, so we've got squad, we've got sell. And actually big up to you because you did say before we, anyone was even contemplating mm. the idea of selling him that that might be on the card. So fair play, you got that right. And you're right, you were laughed at for that. No, but um, yeah, but, but the quote, the reason why that was is because of how you said it though. No, because I'll tell you what happened. Jay-Z's I said that and then somebody immediately said, would you sell Eddie? And I said, at the moment, I would keep him because he will stay on the bench much more than somebody with Jesus with. And everyone took that to mean I preferred... Eddie over Jesus, so they quite conveniently blurred yeah, the lines. The internet, but I also think Jesus now would be more comfortable being on the bench than Eddie would, in my opinion. Now, anyway, that's let me just say Jesus squad for me because he can play out on the right. We don't have any depth for Saka. Mm-hmm. He can play out on the left, and he can play it slightly more similarly to a Martinelli. Um, and I still think he's got bags of quality. And it's like I said, those players that arrived in 2022, I'd give them one more year. They'll all be disappointed with how their second season went. Um, but hopefully he can kick on and I just think he's so talented. But yeah, if he has anything like the injuries he had this last season, it's weird. He had, I think, four or five injuries this season, but he still managed to play, I think, over 20 Premier League games. Mm-hmm. So while he wasn't that available, that like we'd want him to be or, or as fit as we'd want him to be, he was available probably more than we remember. Problem is, he just wasn't good enough to start a lot of those games in terms of his form. And I just want to say, I'd I'm not him. disputing the talent. Oh, I know. I acknowledge... He's a very talented footballer. Yeah. He can do a lot of different things. However, again, he cannot be relied upon. Yeah. We're okay. in the hunt for big trophies. So. Gabriel Martinelli. <laughs> Squad player for me. <sighs> Squad, uh, listen, another one. Very talented. I like him. He brings an asset to the team that is um, shouldn't be understated, which is raw pace and aggression when he's on it. Yeah, I love However, um, he didn't have a good season last season. Um, so I don't think you can... You don't, I, if, I, if you don't mind me jumping in, yeah. I don't think I can look at the way Havertz ended last season and put him as a squad player because we want to add depth to the forward line and then say Martinelli is a guaranteed starter next season because he mm. struggled to get up to full speed. He struggled to get to the, the heights of the season before. Now I've made all the excuses for him. That left-hand side, yeah. changed that left-back, the amount of work he has to put in. He did have a couple injuries, one in October, one I think um, in March, I think, end of February, March. So it just was a bad season. That happens mm. for footballers yeah, sometimes. I think he's quality. I think he's good enough to be a starting left winger getting 15 goals in the Premier League for a title-winning side. I genuinely believe he's good enough. But going into next season considering I want to add a forward I did I want to add two I want to add a striker and more depth on the wing someone who's got pace and is going to compete with Saka and Martinelli but right now for what he performed what he delivered last season do I go into next season thinking yeah Martinelli a, he's a definite starter for me next year no I think at well, the moment, yeah, that, that's, a, I think he's a squad player yeah. that again like Havertz will play a lot of football like a few others but when I read this list of Raya Saliba White, Gabriel, Timber, Erdegaard, Rice, Saka. And Timber, now I'm thinking maybe we shouldn't have really put him in there. But I go, yeah, they are all starting a lot of games next season. And I'm not convinced Martinelli is definitely starting the same amount of games next season that these guys are. And that's exactly why I said what I said. Not because, again, I don't rate him. I do rate him. However, um, his, his form can you know, be a little bit unpredictable at times. And like you said, James, I'm not sure if he's going to play every game next season like that. So, for that reason, I'll say squad player. Mine's star. Um, I'm a, wow. I, I think start for Martin. And I, I think he, he, I think, listen, the season he had, he just had it was horrendous. Um, one he'll want to forget, and a lot of you know Martin fans will as well. But I just think when he hit his heights in that season before, what was it, 15 goals or 16 goals and, and crazy assists? That was a great season for Martin. And I think. He can hit that again. I really see it up. I think he just had one bad season. Loads of players have bad seasons, but then they can pick back up. I think Trossard, yes, he came in, done unbelievable and and whatnot. He didn't hit the numbers that Martinelli hit of the season before. Granted, he probably had played more minutes, uh, Martinelli, but 
For me, I think he offers something different with that pace in behind. I think it's something that is overlooked. I don't want to have be, we are completely possession side, but having Martinelli in, the, in, in as an outlet over, over the top or in behind next season, I think will be very key. I think because of we're just so fixated on, it's so recently had such a bad season that he's not going to play majority of next season. I just think he's good enough and has enough time and young enough to have a good enough season where he's back to what we saw the season before. So for so, me, Gabriel Martinelli. But then to challenge that, so you've had him as a starter, so we've agreed on squad between Lauren and I. But yep. So where's Trossard? Let's move on to Trossard next. Where would he go for you guys? Because, and I'll go straight to you, Cecil, mm. because we're talking, that's why I used to have that as an example, we're talking about Martinez because of the pet potential of what he can reach. But when push, com- push came to shove? Yeah, push, push comes to shove. Yeah. Push comes to shove. Um, it was Trossard and Havertz that showed up in the running. It was them who had the big goals, the big moments, the big assists. We're starting in a team that, you know, won the sheer amount of games it did to get to the point it got to. For me, Trossard, if I just say, and I'm going to actually, I won't say what I'm going to say because I'll be the tiebreaker, but, you know, does Trossard, is he the start? Is he a starter next season for you? For me, no, he's a squad player. But so he, so but you, he's, will, he's, you, you think it will flip back towards Martinelli yeah. being the guy? And, may, and some may people may watch this and say that's just your bias because I no, have that Miley, but I actually think, fair shout. I think he is capable and good enough to hit the heights of what we've seen, like I mentioned before in the season before this one has just finished. And, Again, it's something that I, I, I like that outlet. I like that style. I like the impact. I like the speed. I think with Timber coming back in the side as well, I think he he progresses. Once we have a solid, again, there was so much chopping and changing, which you mentioned before as well, I think Martinelli was affected. I think once that's confirmed and, and solidified, I think Martinelli, we see the best of him again. Um, but Trossard, where would you put him? Just a squad player. So, squad. so he, so play, he, plays, squad. he still plays on cool. the left, but it's in a rotation. It's, it's when Martinelli... Maybe has a dip, or if he doesn't, I think what he hits the ground running. Yeah, I'll go squad player. Um, again, very talented player, good finisher. I think I think he's probably, in terms of uh, goals per minutes ratio, has proven yes, himself to be the best finisher at the club. It's very good. However, what I would say about Trossard is there have been times in the season, more earlier and mid, yeah. when he started games, he wasn't the most effective. 100%. In fact, I would say, if there is a criticism of Trossard, is that... Sometimes when he starts games, he doesn't impose himself on the game enough. And then he might pop out of nowhere and get you a goal Agreed. or an assist. Um, but he's still a valuable player. And there's certainly no shame, um, to me anyway, if you are a squad player. Because he will get plenty I of games. I agree. It's, yeah. not, it's not a criticism. Yeah. But what, what we're yeah. doing, we're just separating the starters yeah. from like, we're saying these are the... These are the guys we think are going to be really, really important next mm. season. Mm. And everyone else will be important in their own exactly, way too. Yeah. But we're talking Saka, unless he has an absolute, unless it's injury or diabolical form, <laughs> he's playing every game. Exactly, yeah. Rice, unless it's injury or diabolical form, he's playing every game. Martinelli, I think, can be in good form and still not start. Yeah. Like, you, you, you said that for both though you said Trossard and Martinelli for yeah squad. because both of them have kind of been like I impact agree. players for me in different ways I don't ways. think we have to have 11 starters oh yeah. that's how I've gone with it okay fine Bo- both of those guys are impact players for slightly different reasons we we look at Martinelli as an impact player saying right you bring him on when the opposition legs are a bit tired mm. 60, 65 minutes or maybe even a bit earlier if the manager's being a bit more progressive he can really hurt them with with his pace, his directness, his aggression, running with the ball. Mm. Trossard is not quite that type of player. He's not going to hurt you with pace or aggression, but he can come on and change the game. He can come on, get goals and okay. stuff like that. Yeah, we, we all know it's just quickly. So, but you must expect that a left winger to come in because are you saying they split 50-50 down I, the middle? Because no, I, I think what I think what I'm saying is time. that I think what I'm saying is maybe I should have been clear at the start of the video. It's like the, the you start, said he's play the majority. The starters for me are the ones that I just think if they're playing well, they are in that team. Yeah. That's how I That's think. A, that was if they're, they're playing well, they're in that team. Now, I think we could have if you another back, forward maybe. we add, whether it's a, whether it's a Pedro Neto, <laughs> whether it's a oh. Sesco, whether it's... So next season, our front three might be made up of Martinelli, Trossard, Havertz, Sesco, Sacco, Jesus, right? I've just made up a six there. Mm. Now, Saka is probably the only one that I'm thinking is starting every game if he's fit and available. Mm. I could see it being Sesco one day with Martinelli or Havertz one day with Trossard. Or do you get what I'm saying? Mm. Like, or, or Jesus up top with Martinelli. I could see a lot of other players mm. 
being messed around with more, playing in different positions, coming out the team, being rotated. But I just think there's certain players that are like, no, if you're fit, so. we, we, we need you playing. Okay. And, and that's where I just differentiate the starters. So, I misunderstood right. then, Matt. Let's let's start. And, and it also has to be said um, that we are operating on recency bias as well. There has to be a bit of that because we can only go, not only go, but we we base on what we've seen over the last season. So, Martin Ada was my player of the year, yeah, twenty two, twenty three. Exactly, so yeah, he yeah. he would he would have been a guaranteed starter for me if we did this a year ago. So, okay, let's start to get to the final players. Eddie and Ketia. We did a well. I did a sort of breaking news video on the channel around how Fulham are apparently willing to spend 30 million. We'll see if that actually comes through. Um, other clubs like Wolves, Palace, Everton looking to do a deal. Everton are reportedly looking at a loan. I would not do the loan. So for you two, squad, loan, sell. So, Laurie. Right. Um, everybody knows who watches his channel regularly. I've been an advocate of Eddie. Um, I've had a go at people who have sat on watch-alongs close to me who I feel have been unfair on the guy. That being said, though, um, I think Eddie needs to kickstart his career, yeah, get agreed. it going again. He needs uh, he needs a move. So sell, sell, sell. I totally agree with that. And like you said, it's not just. I mean, I know we're doing this from the Arsenal perspective, but for his perspective, I think he could go to most teams in the Premier League and get 15 Premier League goals. Mm. I'd want to see him go do that. Uh, Reese Nelson, so. So. Similar to Eddie, needs to kickstart his career again. He wants he wants minutes. He wants a full run in the first team. I, I spoke with him. He said it. So that was the only well, one. Well, why wouldn't he do? I mean, he's a young player, yeah. talented, ambitious. These guys got to play football, man. I, I I would also sell. So I agree with you. To, you know, it's a full house there. We'd all sell. But again, do I think we're going to command big money for him this summer? No. I think we'll do well to get 10, 15 million for him. So if considering he only signed a new contract last summer if we loaned him I wouldn't have a big problem with that I don't think we're going to get big money for him yeah. he might go to a forest He's or somewhere and do really really well Palace if they lose Aliso or Eze I don't know I'm just you know he might do really really well and then suddenly actually his value's up next summer so I'm not against a loan at all for Reese Nelson uh, but I'll go sell and Marquinhos yeah, yeah I think we all agree that yeah. he would stop sold <laughs> <laughs> you didn't mean that, did you? No, of course not. Um, <laughs> All right, so there is the final tier list, people. Only Oconquo were willing to loan, but a few others, like we mentioned. Nelson, Smith, Rowe, if the situation, maybe a Vieira, if the situation... Uh, Marquinhos could be way. a loan, though, as well, just so, you, just so we're aware. Actually, there's the a few of them that could be loans. Sambi yeah. Lukonga yeah. could go out on another loan. Well, I think Lukonga, Smith, could go on Rowe, loan. Vieira, I Nelson, Marquinhos, they could be loans, yeah. but I think we, we all edge towards sell. Yeah. Um, we can see the squad players there. Look, they're good. I mean, Tommy Asu, Jorginho, Havert, Jesus, Martinez, Trossard. No one's saying they don't like those players. They're all going to have a big part to play next season. They're just not going to have, in my opinion, quite as big a part as Raya, Saliba, White, Gabriel, Timber, Erdegaard, Rice and Saka. Timber has been very generously rated by Arsenal fans. I will say this. Yeah. Like, like, he better be good. <laughs> like, it's not even his fault. But we, we all saw one community shield and went, this guy's the truth. <laughs> but let's see well, what happens. To be, although, to be fair, the pre-season games, he, he did shine. Oh, he looked brilliant. brilliant. He looked yeah, brilliant. So. I think we all could tell he's a class. And even player, in the game right? that he got injured, that first game. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I guess Everton, he looked yeah, great. Yeah, so, yeah, so, anyway. A few more puzzles to this piece and I think we're there. We've yeah. Got this one. That's a... That's a Pleasure to say. Yeah, three, four editions. Now, there is going to be a transfer window preview. We're going to be recording it on Friday. I think it'll come out Friday. We'll let you know. Um, of course, we're keeping you up to date with all the news. But the transfer window preview will be looking ahead to what you can expect from Arsenal from the transfer window, or at least as far as we know with the reports. We'll be compiling everything that we've heard, everything that's been reported, and our gut feeling what we think Arsenal will be doing this summer and previewing as Robbie gets stuck into Transfer Daily, which I believe is returning this week. I know a lot of you have been asking for it. It is returning. And of course, any breaking news, anything that happens, any reports from reliable journalists, we'll be covering it live on the channel I say live in real time is what I mean on the channel as it's all being broken we'll be there to discuss it as well last thing I'll say a few of you might be asking what about the young players like Nuaneri and Patino we're talking about the, the first team squad here of course with those players you don't really know how much they can command in value anyway but we'll be keeping up to date with what happens with those players too big thanks to Cecil big thanks to Laurie let us know your thoughts in the comment section below which did we get drastically wrong which do you agree with and uh I always want to know in all the comment section videos, who do you think Arsenal should be targeting this summer more than anyone else? Who should be our priority? Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you very, very soon.